What is up guys? Welcome to week six of the UPA. This is our battle right here. We're taking on Immortal Mens. It is very early in the morning. Uh, it's currently 7.50 a.m. Uh, and I got like two hours of sleep, so I'm not in the best condition to be playing right now. But I know that for a fact that my opponent didn't have a lot of prep, prep time, so hopefully that works in our favor. Uh, while fatigue is working against us, so we're getting ready to click challenge right here. Hopefully uh, we see most of the stuff that we predicted. If the X-Cloud and the Infernape are there, then we're gonna have a tough time, but we'll make do with uh, with what we have. So let's click challenge, and we'll see what we can do. We will take our time. We will also uh, ignore spectators and ignore opponent. Uh, actually, I might just leave Mens on because he's not too much of a bother. So uh, I want to make sure to see what he's saying. And uh, yeah, let's see. Just waiting for him to click accept, and we'll be ready to go. So uh, when I messaged him at like uh, 3 a.m., he only had two Pokemon ready for today. So uh, he's leaving on vacation tomorrow, if I didn't mention that. But okay, so most of the stuff that I had expected, uh, the Vaporeon did come, so that's going to be a little bit of an annoying wall. Uh, hopefully, coverage can help out with that. Let's just uh, ignore spectators real quick. Just in case anybody wants to hop in, I'm just going to wish uh, Mens a little bit of fun this game. And um, let's see. I think I'm looking at Armaldo as a potential lead. I just really don't like that Scallopede, man. It's really scary. If I miss an edge, I'm done. I can take a Boom Burst. I can take a Fire Blast, and I can take a Flare Blitz or a Close Combat even from Banded. So I think this is my play. Yeah, let's lead with Armoldo. Um, let's see what he said here. Geez, now it's time to edit the layout. I love how I only got one right. Awesome! Okay, so he only predicted one Pokemon that we got, that we brought. So, uh, which was probably Deancey. Uh, this is going to throw him off a little bit because now he's not going to ex be expecting uh, certain things. I don't uh, I don't expect him to have predicted the Primeape, nor the Stoutland, uh, nor the Armaldo. So it's a toss-up between whether it was Deancey, Electros, or Chestnut. More than likely Deancey just because I've brought it every single week. It's fully offensive this week, so hopefully that puts in some work. Knockoff would be nice to get rid of P2's Eevee Light. Make it a little bit easier to hit. I actually just have to uh, ring up my... Where is my team builder here? Team is right here. I'm just going to import this into a, t a, into a damage calc real quick, guys. Won't be long. We'll get this show on the road and see what men's decided to lead off with. Um, just need to get rid of this S because this S is always very annoying. My voice sounds raspy. Again, like I said, it's 8 a.m. I just woke up, so it's not even 8 a.m. It's like 7.53. So uh, we import our six sets right here, and uh, hopefully we have all our nicknames and everything's good to go. Opponent still hasn't led. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see if I bring up uh, Armoldo when we go to Jacques. Okay, that is our set. Awesome. All right, so rocks are nice if I can get them up. Um, I just want to see if uh, he potentially leads with Vaporeon. What kind of um, kind of role am I dealing with? Skull does not take us out at all, unless he's like Specs or something. But that'll be good to find out early. Without leftovers, leftovers recovery, it's a lot easier to wear down. Uh, I'm nervous guys. I'm nervous for this battle. I'm not gonna lie. This is going to be a tough one Already the Camtasia is lagging on me for some reason <laughs> uh, This is all going wrong And I have work in like what is it four four hours something like that? I gotta be out of here in like two hours at the latest so Let's see um, uh, I'm going to attempt to pause this recording until my opponent chooses a lead and we will be right back guys All right guys, and we are back. Um, I have to make some kind of cut somewhere because I'm not sure um, When Camtasia actually decided to pause but anyway, uh, we have a Vaporeon versus Armaldo matchup right here. Not the best for us 
I really wanted to use this to... Well, actually, this isn't too bad. Because I can get up rocks right here at the very least. And uh, we are potentially faster than his Vaporeon if it's a min speed. Which I don't expect it to be, but... Um, let's see. He didn't bring the Sand Slash. So I want to get up hazards. As swiftly as possible, actually. Yeah. So. Let's get up rocks. I don't care about the Scald. We'll take it. He didn't burn. That's fine. We're going to get up rocks right here. And I'm so tempted to switch out into Chestnut right now, but... Do I really need this thing for anything? Um, not really. I'm going to let the the, uh, the timer run a little bit. Well, not the timer, because the uh, there is no timer, but... I'm going to let the clock run a little bit, make him think that I'm thinking about switching out into Chestnut. And then probably just fire off a Stone Edge. And uh, get that over with. And then go into Chestnut and start setting up some spikes. I think is the play. I want to see how much our chestnut set takes from a Vaporeon that just did this much to... Which is a, is, is a perfectly normal roll to an uninvested Vaporeon. How much this does with an Ice Beam to chestnut. Or with like an HP flying. Anything like that. Um, to Koba... Oh, that's not Koba. Chestnut. Koba. Skull does nothing. Ice Beam shouldn't be doing too much more. Because it's not Stab. Ice Beam... 38 to 45, and Hidden Power Flying. Hidden Power Flying does 51 to 61. Okay, so that's okay. Alright, I'm gonna Stone Edge right here. Try to make my opponent think that I'm going into Chestnut right here. As he does just Skull, that's fine. I'm gonna lose Armaldo, but we didn't really need it. I can now... Uh, not having the Sand Slash is so good for us. We have... Um, we have Electros right here. Uh, I'm going to go into Chestnut. We are rather speedy, and I'm just going to start setting up some spikes on my opponent, and uh, we'll see what he wants to do, but actually, hold on a second. Let me think about this, because that Scallopede is a threat. That Scallopede is a huge threat, if I just go for that. Well, I already clicked it. Let's not go back on moves. Goes into Clefairy. Interesting. Um... I'm really curious, how much does this thing actually do to me, Clefairy? <laughs> it's funny, but, um... Okay, Moonblast does a good amount. Does a sizable amount to us. I feel like I can just go into Electros here and knock off this thing's Eviolite. And get an item off of something. Yeah, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to Electros, eat up the Moonblast, no special attack drop, which is nice. And I'm gonna go for the knockoff, get rid of this thing's item. With both hazards up and my opponent only having Vaporeon with uh, residual recovery from the looks of it, we should be good to go with Deancey. Deancey is looking very, very solid here. I just have to get rid of the Eviolites on this and the Porygon, and we'll be okay. So, opponent's probably calculating to see if that was Assault Vest damage, and in fact is Assault Vest. He will soon come to find out. Or I could just be specially defensive. That's an option as well, so. Um, knockoff loses me pretty much nothing here. As uh, we've taken a little bit of damage with the team, Armoldo did what it had to do, though. It got up rocks. My opponent cannot get rid of them. His only defogger was Megalodios, and the Sand Slash was the only spinner. So that means that Scallopede's taking 37% on entry, and everything else is taking 24. 24 to 25. So, this is looking pretty good. Hopefully Stoutland uh, or Deancey can come through in the end. I'm going to need this Electros alive, though. I'm definitely going to need this alive. Actually, Primate puts in a lot of work, too. We get rid of the, um, the Eviolite on this thing, as my opponent goes for rocks. So, not a huge deal. Um... I guess let's just go for a Giga Drain right here, since we're faster. And uh, we get back a little bit of health right there. Opponent goes for Moonblast. Is not going to get the special attack drop, which is nice. This thing normally runs like Wish Protect, right? No, it gets Soft Boiled, okay. Alright, that's fine. 
How much is Mika doing now? Without the Eviolite? Light? Mika, nope. <laughs> we have to type in Stoutland. Mika. Frustration. That's a lot of damage. Without an Eviolite, even if he's defensive, should be taking this thing out after a Volt Switch. Let's go for the Volt Switch. We'll go into Stoutland. This thing wants to heal up. That's fine, we get a kill. There we go, soft boiled. And like we said before, even a physically defensive variant is not living this. We're going straight for frustration and knocking this thing out. And uh, nothing really wants to come in on this after either. Uh, Vaporeon can't knock me out from full. And uh, doesn't really want to take two frustrations. It does min 53. That's a physically defensive variant. After the spikes, this is going to do so much. Might have to sack something to the Infernape though. We'll see. If it goes for close combat, it's going to be a bad time. <laughs> uh, and we know that Porygon, I think, does die after two layers. Uh, Porygon 2, DuckTales defensive. Yeah, yeah, it does go down after the uh, after the hazards. So he can't bring that in either. He has to bring in his Infernape, no matter what. I think, personally. That just has to come in. So Frustration is going to be able to take out the Clefairy. He should know by now that I am banded and not scarfed. Because that would have more than likely not taken him out if... Well, I mean, if he's not physically defensive. Let's go back to Clefairy for a second. Clefairy, uh, especially defensive versus Stoutland. Frustration without the Eviolite. If I'm Choice Scarfed, uh, Choice Scarf, Adamant, let's say. I still take him out. So if he's not fully physically defensive, he has to have tried to figure out what kind of set I am. I could still be Scarfed, for all he knows. But, um... Porygon, if Porygon 2 comes out, I'm going straight into Chestnut. If Infernape comes out, I'm going to have to try to find a sack and to get in my Deancey afterwards. I have to find out if it's special or physical as well. And then I have to find out what kind of set the X-Plot is, because if it's Scarfed, it can still run through my team. I still have Primeape in the back, but Primeape's not doing too much to Vaporeon. Vaporeon versus Primeape. Jake. Actually, it's not doing a bad amount. Uh, after two spikes, Close Combat has a 32.8 chance to 2-hit KO. That's a max defensive variant. Okay, so the Infernape does choose to come out. Good play. Definitely. Man, I'm really hoping this thing is special. I am really hoping this thing is special right now. Let's... Okay, if I lose Electros, Stoutland still deals with the Vaporeon. Still fires off frustrations for days, and he can't switch anything in. If I lose coverage, I can't knock off the EV Light. But once again, Mika just comes in on either or of those Pokemon. Vaporeon, a weakened Vaporeon, or a Porygon 2. Fires off frustrations. Or Superpower. Depending on what I want to go for. Let's go into coverage. We're at 66%. It does go for a close combat. And it's not going to knock us out. That screams Scarf. Infernape. Choice Scarf. Versus. Um, Electros. Coverage. Sorry if I'm being a little bit slow, guys, but... Yeah, close combat is a max roll of 63, and it did 56 to us. So you got a low roll. Didn't really matter, but... Yeah, let's just, um... Okay, so it's Choice Scarf, right? So how does Chestnut take its Flare Blitz? Curious. 88% max. So we can take it. I'm just gonna go for Volt Switch. As my opponent decides to close combat again. Another thing. Porygon 2. How much do you take from Deancey's Moonblast? Deancey. Offensive. Moonblast does. 
That's nothing. Man, this is such a hard matchup because of those things. I think I have to... I'm down a Pokemon, which is really, really bad because this Infernape... Well, now that I know it's Scarfed, I can play around it a little bit. Well, it's not necessarily Scarfed. It doesn't have to be, but... You know what? Let's go into Deancey. And actually, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to pull a double into Chestnut. And try to threaten the Porygon to get some leftovers recovery too in the process. This thing has a limited amount of switch-ins because of the spikes, which means I can get up another layer as well, which would be good. So yeah, let's go into Koba. Predicting the Porygon too. Very nice. We catch it. Let's do that. That means Mega Deancey isn't Mega Evolved, unfortunately, but I can Mega Evolve on anything because of Protect. So I'm not too worried about that. How much does my Drain Punch do? Probably a lot more than Moonblast. 35 to 41. That's nice. That's actually pretty good. Uh, we should be faster than this thing as well. It's 156 uninvested. I can do one of two things. I can get up another layer of spikes, or I can try to weaken this thing. I mean, this pressures it, right? Anyway, so let's just go for spikes. My opponent goes for toxic. That's fine. I don't mind that at all. That's okay. How much did we say Stoutland does to this? Mika. 41 to 49. Superpower does take it out from 65, though. Hmm. Alright, so now with the extra spike up, what this does for me is puts Vaporeon in range of two Moon Blasts. It also allows Infernape one less switch in. So I'm going to go for a Drain Punch. So my opponent decides to go straight into x Bloud on my Drain Punch. So goodbye threat. Wow. That is huge. My opponent just lost one of their most offensive Pokemon. And I'm about to spiky shield right all over this thing. And give it a little bit of extra damage. Okay, so he's flamethrower. Does that mean he's mixed? Is this thing mixed? And can we take a flamethrower from a mixed ape? Because we definitely saw that he was like max attack. So if we add because of the damage on Electros earlier. So if we factor in flamethrower he's very close to max attack on chestnut koba you take this you definitely take this and you can drain punch and knock him out actually potentially knock him out after this do i need this for anything no how much is his Porygon at? 76? Yeah. Alright, let's go for the Drain Punch. Flamethrower actually does knock us out. That's a little bit curious. What kind of Infernape is this? How much special attack investment did you need to knock us out? We were sitting at 75, so that's not enough. But an uninvested close combat would not have done that much to Electros, would it? It would have never done that much. It did outside of that range, didn't it? Uh, where is it? Where did he go for close combat on Electros? Coverage. Took 56. What set are you? Are you adamant? No. Okay, if he's modest, then he never does enough to... Or Electros. But that's the only way... He, unless he specs with close combat? I mean, that's possible. Alright, I think Porygon 2 is in range of two Moon Blasts. Let me just calc this up. Porygon 2. From Mega Deancey. Especially... No. No, 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 no. 
offensive. Uh, well, let's just get our set, actually. I didn't calc with our set, I don't think. Jules does just slightly more, but it is enough to knock it out. And how much do I do to Vaporeon? With two layers of spikes up. Moonblast is a 14.8% chance to two-hit KO. With spikes up. Still have Scarfed Infernape in the back. Uh, Scarf Primeape, excuse me. So if this thing's not Scarfed... Because he wanted to switch out on this before, right? If this thing's not Scarfed, then Primeape wins. If this thing is Scarfed, then I may just lose. But Primeape can take one, right? Infernape... If we calculated this set that like has both a lot of attack and a lot of defense... No, a lot of uh, a lot of both attacks. I mean, a lot in both attack stats. Then against Primeape. No, close combat is doing the job. Darn. All right, let's fire off a Moonblast. He can't stay in and flamethrower me. There's no way. And I think as long as I keep Stoutlin alive, I win this game. And as long as he doesn't burn me either, with his Vaporeon, I pretty much win. I have to make sure that doesn't happen though. Does switch out, does go into Porygon, after the spikes, after everything. Moonblast is going to be a two-hit KO. That it does 28, there we go. And we have to go for another Moonblast right here. And now, his Infernape only has one more switch. If it locks itself into close combat, right? Does Deancey live? Deancey, Jules. Hmm. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, what do we do here? Porion Skull doesn't take me out, right? Orion. Such a tough matchup for me, guys. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Vaporeon Skull does potentially take me out. I can just go for damage right here, try to lower its special attack with a Moonblast. The problem is, the Infernape gets one more switch, but it only needs one more switch. Unless it's not running a lot of speed. Maybe I should have maxed out my speed on my Primeape. Yeah. If it's Choice Scarf, it still wins. I have to just go for Moonblast right here and weaken this thing. It does just go for a Scald, knocks me out. I get a Revenge Kill right here with Mika. And then Jake has to come through with Stone Edges. That's it. That's all I can hope for. I get a kill right here with Mika, and I have to come through with Stone Edges. Let's do it. We're 259 speed. We were only enough for the X-Cloud. We're not running, running max speed or anything like that. We needed the sheer power. And uh, Scallopede, I don't think, can take us out with anything. We're pretty bulky. I don't think it can take us any out with anything unless it's boosted. Scallopede. We offensive versus Stoutland. Can Megahorn take us out? Oh, it can. Okay. Um, that could be an issue as well. So I gotta watch out for that. Not that I can do anything at this point. I'm down to my two lowest picks in Stoutland and Primeape. But these guys have put in so much work. He can't switch out his Vaporeon. He has to stay in right here. Uh, if it switches out, then he dies to hazards, so... It all comes down to, can I land two stone edges, and is this thing scarfed? And can it knock me out with its close combat? Because if that was an absolute max roll, like let's say it's Infernape, um, it's choice scarfed, but it's not running max attack. It's only running enough attack to, like, let's say, hold on, 
Electros. Where is Electros? The Electros, there we go. Coverage. Coverage took 53, or 56, I believe. So he would have to be running about 100 attack to be able to reach that, and that would have been a max roll. Now, if he's running that and against Prime Ape, Prime Ape, Jake, it potentially doesn't take me out. So I have to go for Frustration right here. My opponent chooses to lock themselves into close combat, obviously. Uh, there's no other play right there. And I have to bank on two Stone Edges. We actually take a lot less from Rocks than I was thinking, so hold on a second. If he is the full Scarf set, like with max attack, Infernape, um, where's the choice scarf set? Okay. Um, the regular one, okay, it didn't adjust, but let's say 252 attack. Close combat is a roll in my favor. It has a 37.5% chance to Oko me. And then if he doesn't have protect on Scallopede, it's all going to come down to can we hit two stone edges. That's really all it is. It's can we hit two stone edges. And the question is, is he scarfed? Is he even scarfed? Because if he's not, we're going to knock him out right here. If we land, of course. If we don't land, that would be a drag. But we still have a chance to, to, to live right here. So this is a very intense match. It all comes down to you, Jake, once again. If he is scarfed, please don't crit me. Get a low roll. Something. And then we just have to pray that his Scallopy doesn't have Protect. And if it doesn't, we knock it out with the Stone Edge if we land. It all comes down to this. It's going to be a very, very narrow victory for whoever it is. It's either going to be a 2-0 in his favor right now, or a 1-0, or it's going to be a 1-0 for me. <sighs> Why do we have to do this so early, man? He had such a threatening team, and the Vaporeon was such an issue. Uh, I did prep for it, but oh my god, he's not Scarfed. Okay, hold on. I'm not gonna get excited too quickly. Scallopede. It can't take me out with anything. Not even poison jab. <sighs> Don't say that, man. Okay. So he doesn't have protect, he pretty much said GG. If we land this edge, we win. Let's click it. Jake, come through, man. Okay, he has protect. That's fine, he still doesn't take us out with anything minus a crit. So we have to edge. He does have the protect. He is faster. He's gonna hit us first. He's a life orb variant. He can still not knock us out from full, even with a jab, which is his strongest move to hit us with. He could try to flinch us with a rock slide if he has it. That's an option. It's resisted, but it's an option. How much does that do? Rock slide. He puts me in range. Goes for a swords dance. Plays off the miss and he gets it. <sighs> that really sucks, man. That really sucks, but Mens played great. He even made the right play there at the end. <laughs> that was good. I mean, unless he doesn't have anything to hit me with, I'm just gonna edge. He's got the Quake, and that's gonna be GG. I predicted a Swords Dance Protect uh, Scallopede, and he got it. That's GG. Uh, it's, uh, it comes down to hacks at the end, but um, it's fine. It's it's a miss. It's not a crit at the very least. But um, it's okay, man. Don't worry about it. He's saying, I don't want this, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Have fun on vacation. That's what I'm telling him. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's, yeah, you're going to watch this after and you're going to see. No, don't. Don't, 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 don't. He wants to forfeit. No, don't, dude. No. Come on. It was a great game. Yeah. Anyway, guys. Um, <laughs> this one's the forfeit because I lose to Hacks again. But this one's not too bad because it's not a crit. You know, it's, it's an 80% chance uh, to hit the move. 
But Stone Edge is a move that regularly misses, just like Focus Blast. If you're relying on a move like that, I could have just used Rock Slide, to be honest. I mean, I, I don't even know if, um, if Primeape gets Rock Slide. I'm going to check that right now, but let's see. It does. So if I wanted to not miss, I could have just used Rock Slide. And I would have had a much better chance of hitting, so. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'm not upset. I'm not upset at all. Uh, it's against Mints. If it was, um, if it was against anybody else, maybe a little bit more, but uh, I have so much respect for Mentz. He's helped me out in the past uh, against last week's opponent, and he um, he prepped very well uh, for with the little amount of time that he had. He brought the right Pokemon to check me. Um, just I needed to hit that that Stone Edge, and it would have been over. But that's it, guys. Um, that's gonna wrap it up for this week. Unfortunately, we take another loss, and we're now two and four. Uh, but it was a 1-0 victory in my opponent's favor, which puts us only at minus one. So it's not too bad as long as my opponents in our division lose all of them. Uh, we should be good to go. We do have two games coming up later in the season against the division rival who is at the top of our division. And if we can take both those games, then we have a real shot. Uh, because I'll be able to uh, maybe gain some momentum and surpass him in, in our division. Because our division's not too strong. And if I can do that, if I can beat Michael twice, then we can do it. But it's not looking too good right now, unfortunately. This is great experience for a first season, by the way. This is uh, amazing. I feel my prep getting better. I feel my plays getting better. I'm just so... I'm calm. I'm collected. And um, even after missing that edge, like, I didn't go haywire this time, luckily. And, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was good, man. Um, again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you uh, enjoyed this battle, if you want to see more, hit that like button down below. Leave a comment for me. Let me know what you thought. Uh, hit me up on Twitter or on Facebook. Both are in the description. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see uh, all of this content. I put out four to five lives a week. I also put out two team builders and two battles. So you guys uh, can see these league matches. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.